Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are comparing normal MRI of the lumbosacral spine with degenerative changes and infective process involving lumbosacral region. Here we can see there is normal alignment of the lumbosacral spine. All vertebrae shows normal marrow signals while in this case we can see there is area of marrow abnormality in L2 vertebra. Remaining vertebrae shows normal marrow signals as we have seen in this patient but there is area of marrow abnormality in L2 vertebra. We can also see that there is normal height and hydration patterns of all lumbar discs. Central nucleus pulposis shows normal signals which are bright on T2 weighted sequence. We can confirm this on axial T2 weighted sequence as well where low signal intensity annulus fibrosis can be seen with central bright nucleus pulposis but on this case we can see although there is normal height and hydration patterns in upper three lumbar discs but we can see there is a reduction in the hydration pattern of lower two lumbar discs suggesting disc desiccation or degenerative changes in these discs we can see that there is no soft compressive disc disease as all the discs are within their normal position but here we can see in there is small broad based disc bulge in L45 disc which can be confirmed on axial images we can also see there is tiny right paracentral disc bulge in L5S1 disc and there is extra thing which is called radial tear noted in right posterolateral fibers of annulus fibrosis so this leads to chemical neuritis of adjacent nerves and cause significant pain but here we see that there is no such radial tear in this case so we have compared normal height and hydration pattern of the discs with degenerative disc desiccatory changes or degenerative disc dehydration and we have also seen an example of radial tear in annulus fibrosis which can lead to chemical neuritis and pain here we can see that there are multiple variable sized collection or abscesses in right psoas muscle which is swollen and left psoas muscle shows normal signals and morphology we can also see there is normal signals and morphology of both psoas muscles but here in this patient we can see that there are abnormal signals in both psoas muscles and right quadratus lumborum suggesting inflammatory process with tiny collections in left psoas muscle while large multiseptated collection or abscesses are noted in right psoas and quadratus lumborum muscle with the involvement of adjacent posterior paraspinal muscle similarly we can also see that this infected vertebra still shows intact end plates number one and adjacent intervening discs are also normal so there is no involvement of contiguous vertebrae and adjacent end plates and discs are spared such findings are usually noted in tuberculosis infection but usually when we see pyogenic infection we see there is erosion of adjacent end plates and there is involvement of intervening discs but in tuberculosis we can see this pattern where there is involvement of the vertebral body we can also call it a case of the central tuberculosis with paraspinal collections sparing 
adjacent end plates and intervening discs. We can also see conus and adjacent lower dorsal cord is normal and this is normal over here. Overall we have compared two cases and this is a normal MRI lumbosacral spine, normal alignment, normal heights of all lumbosacral vertebrae, all adjacent end plates and intervening discs are normal but here we have seen degenerative disc dehydration, radial tear and marrow abnormality with abnormal signals in adjacent soft tissues favoring infective process. So this is comparison of normal and diseased spine. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.